Hello, I'm calling because you recently expressed interest in taking part in one of our game usability studies here at the Springbok Games. Is that still correct? Oh, fantastic. And uh, we sent you um, a pass to go into some of the beta testing. Were you able to access that and enjoy some time in game? Great. That's great to hear. Uh, well then, today I would just be hoping to uh, go through the follow-up. Uh, as we had discussed, I will ask you some questions about the game. And I'd just love for you to be as open and honest as you feel. Uh, I am not responsible for any of the game design, any of the menu, any of the UI, any of the script. So please don't feel that you need to protect anyone's feelings at these points. Uh, I am simply going to transcribe your feelings and uh, then we'll be able to extrapolate a bit more from them later on. And your honesty is the most helpful thing we can offer, okay? Alright, now the very first thing is I just wanted to get your basic information to confirm that you are uh, the participant I am looking for. So if that's alright, we'll go ahead and get started. Great, so let's look into your basic information file and can you give me your full name? And your age. Alright. Great. Uh, and if I could get your occupation, as you would best describe it. Alright. And, um, and that is at which company? Oh, that's a big one. And they're set here in town. Okay, so the campus here in town. Perfect. Okay. Um, now we do ask about your median income. Uh, yours particularly, not your family. Yes, annually. Okay. Great. actually been into our studios before for live testing? You have. Okay. And do you remember the dates or the testers that you worked with? Okay. Approximate time. So you think back in October of this year? And any before that? Earlier in the summer. Okay. And do you happen to remember the names of the testers that you worked with? No? That's fine. Do you remember anything about them in particular? Or were they liked or their personalities? Uh huh. Alright. You know, I think that. Sounds a lot like Ryan. Does that ring a bell? Yes. Okay. Yeah, Ryan was one of our main testers. So. Okay, great. Uh, now, uh, how many household members do you currently live with? Yes, including yourself. Okay, so just the two of you. Uh, cats. Uh, cats don't count. Though I think they should, but they don't really. Okay. Um, now, uh, could you tell me about which gaming console we currently own? Uh, current generation, yes. Alright. And 
any handheld devices. Okay, just phones and that sort of thing. Alright. And I do apologize for any extra noise. Um, obviously, uh, we have a lot of different agents speaking as mini testers today. So, yeah, well, we appreciate it. It is nice sometimes to be able to just, um, to speak on the phone instead of having you come all the way in. Yes. Okay. Um, now, uh, are you, uh, a PC or Mac gamer? Mm-hmm. Okay. So it's easy. And Mac. And I assume do you just dual boot? Dual boot into space boot camp. Okay. Uh, can I ask? Uh, do you use Steam, Origin, Steam, some of three? But you have started to use Origin. Okay. I'll make a note about that then. <laughs> you prefer not to use Origin. But you're sort of cornered into it. I understand that, actually. Okay. And which game uh, do you feel that you you use Origin for? Uh-huh. For EA. Yes. Okay. Alright. Uh, and can I get you to estimate uh, how many games you currently have in your Steam library? Well, uh, we do find that most people have many games in their Steam library, uh, perhaps more than they've actually ever loaded or played. Uh, so we are looking for the number of total games that you uh, actually have in your library, regardless of whether you've uh, played them or ever launched them. Uh-huh. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> so I'll put you uh, right there, and then that will put you in this category. Okay. Uh, it actually isn't the highest category, if you would believe it. Um, yes. Through Steam sales. I'll make a note of that, too. I think that's important. I think that Steam sales tend to uh, <laughs> uh, motivate us, don't they? And then, oh, okay, so you like bundles as well, in particular, the humble bundle, the humble bundle, <laughs> the humble indie bundle, and other. deals, coupons, things like that, are you sort of reflective of you? Yes. Okay. Uh, great. No, you're doing great. Uh, and then I would say, do you happen to know, um, while we're talking about it, how many games you have in your library that are unplayed? Yes. It can be unfortunate to take stock of if indeed sort of embarrassing and sad. Okay, about 30. Wow. Um, no. Again, um, I'm sure the Indies is unplayed, but these are games that are purchased or gifted. Yeah. Um, that's, <laughs> that's still not going to put you in our highest bracket. Don't worry about that. Alright. So that's good. That's the general information. Um, and so uh, we're going to move on to not just talking about um, any platform. Uh, we're going to just be talking about sort of more uh, games in general, which I think is the fun part. Um, so in the last uh, five years, 
what would you say are the games that you've played the most? And by that I mean just if we if you broke it down into hours, uh, which are the games that you spent the most time playing? Yes, you can absolutely think about it. You can look at your library for reference. Skyrim's got a Did you um, download a lot of the DLC? Oh, in a case, the DLC is there. Um, Skyrim, like Hearthstone. The more you, the more you tell me, the more I can, can make notes. So, okay. Um, anything else that you can think of that is really Mass Effect? Yeah, of course we recount that in the whole trilogy, actually. Um, oh, okay. So multiple playthroughs. And was that with, uh, with, the, with the DLC as well for most of those? Yes, you think you did all. Okay. All the DLC. Great. Alright. Um. Sure, yeah. Um, my casual. understand it. It can actually be quite hard, to be honest. I really feel like you just spent a lot of time playing Days Gone Dark and Mass Effect just because it's difficult to. The Stanley Parable? And would you say that was for sort of the replay value or the... Right. Replay value was if you won Turn or something like that. Yes. So you find yourself to be a bit of a completionist, maybe? Alright. Great. Um, well, if anything else comes to mind, yes, keep us informed. That's great. Um, how about we move to, uh, of your favorite games of all time? Sure, they could be any time. Any time. They don't have to be recent. Yep. Go ahead, just list them off, and I will <laughs> answer them down. Okay. So a lot, but not serious. No, 11. Okay. So less into uh, online games. Okay. Uh, and. Oh, alright, yeah. <laughs> Contra, such a great game. Another challenge game. Okay. Alright. Cool. Uh huh. Were there ones? that you liked particularly in the series? Four. Yeah, four was an excellent one. Okay. Um, and any after that? Okay. Alright. And... Okay. Yeah. Okay.
kalau ada sedikit penyesalan atau apa level kelas menurut Studio by TFC. Yeah, of course. Right. I guess this is taking. This is kind of a picture. Um. All right. Uh. And uh, I would like to ask. Um. Do you have um? Do you do you use your uh, mobile devices in your home? Mm -hmm. Yeah. iPhone. Smartphone. Pad. That kind of thing. Uh huh. So you use your your iPhone a little. Okay. It's a monkey puzzle game. Mm hmm. Okay. Mod one. This goes to Mandela. It's a good one. Um. And about how often would you say you play games on mobile? Uh, per week, maybe an hour. Just a couple. Hours. Great. Um, and uh, how, how do you feel about free to play? Have you ever made purchases in free to play games? Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, tell me more about it. I'd uh, love to hear. So you don't feel like they often uh, represent <laughs> themselves at all? Right. You can kind of hit a paywall. Mm -hmm. I would say uh, in that same vein, are there social uh, Facebook type of games? Those kinds of things, you know, that were actually quite popular for a while. I don't know if uh, you have felt that you've gotten into one that you can think of. Oh, sure. You know, yeah, Camp Azuli is. I actually tried that out myself. Okay, so um, that was the officially licensed game of um, Stephanie Ass Ascension. Something like that. Yeah, I can, I can look it up. I really should have known. Yes. So you play that on a on a Facebook platform, and that was one where you felt you enjoyed. You enjoyed the format, okay? Do you want to tell me about what was a little different um, in your experience with that game? Uh huh. Real characters, um, good music, yeah, that's very true, and many women. Okay, so I'm hearing that you didn't feel like you necessarily hit that wall where you had to pay to go further. busy and bustling you have to live there you have people coming and going you have to write the book you have to yeah okay um now uh what would you say is your favorite genre of game and again we're going again we're going back out to any kind of game now okay so you like sort of Mm-hmm. 
And do you prefer to play this on console or PC? Uh huh. So you don't like the auto aim on your console. Um, so you prefer most of it. Sure, yeah. Um, so you would say stealth, actually. I mean, that they, they're com the strategies sort of mesh together more than anything out there. There's certain games where you can, you can go in guns blazing, or you can play stealth and be a little bit more creative with that. Okay, so you kind of enjoy losing more like the, the day of X, Dishonored, those kinds of games. Enjoy the last of us. So perhaps even a little less action. Mm -hmm. More, um, more strategy, or at least more exact, perfectly timed. Okay. So that's actually really good information for us. Okay. Uh, now, um, I would say that, uh, okay, so the next question is going back to social networking a little. Um, is, is that social element important to your gaming experience? Okay. Not particularly. Any other explaining at all? Mm-hmm. pressure to play more. Got it. Yeah. And then, yes, I see what you're saying. <laughs> I see what you're understanding. Okay, so that's the best one. Um, are there ever times when you feel that the social element really does add to your Okay. So in games where you might want to show off um, something you've built. <laughs> okay. That makes sense. Okay, trading items and that kind of thing, yeah. Because if you like that ability, you like that cooperative element. So I'll mention that cooperative is something you, you can enjoy playing. Uh -huh. So you like it if it's on a smaller scale in your own. Do you have some examples? Oh, that's a great one. Okay, well I've heard that game. What else? Small and more defined survival game. Okay, great. Um, all right. You've given us some ideas. You have a really wonderful. Some people don't give us much at all. Uh, so you're giving us a lot to work with. Um, how about achievements? Are those achievements or trophies important to you? Or the trophies. Yeah. I honestly feel kind of the same way. Yeah. Good to know. No? I could be as, as blunt as possible. Um, I've asked if you've made any gaming purchases. Um, and um, you've talked a little bit about multiplayer games that you enjoy. 
hope you enjoy and thank you for the to your uh, hello cool multiplayer yeah do you ever host uh, events or anything around you playing games together maybe it's like an outdoor party oh great okay so you still have guitar hero type party Taiko Drummer mm -hmm. Performing this kind of party game Oh, Mario Land, that's so nice That game is really nice Okay, and so then you still will sometimes have your servers to do Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like Halo Old, old school kind of LAN night You do like to sometimes play that in oh in com com competitive version. I think I can write that down. I just can too. Like to play competitive versions. Mhm. Mm okay, so you do sometimes play League of Legends with your friends. No, nope, no shame in that. <laughs> I think it's great. Um, yeah, ask how much time is that something that has been uh, um, a hobby for years? You feel fascinating? Okay, okay, great, 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 great. So you would say that that is something that's sort of been a, a part of your past. And just to delve a little deeper is, are there reasons we, we sort of got away from competitive play, from, um, you know, playing in, on a team and that sort of thing? Okay. So school. Dating. Uh-huh. Playing servers. Don't you ever miss it? But not enough to get so far back into it. Okay. That's a really, no, that's a great insight. Um, we do sort of wonder, you know, as I I think like you grew up playing video games, and so you sort of wonder at what point do you, um, you know, what at what point do you need to work it into your adult adult life in a reasonable way, <laughs> right? Okay. Um, so I appreciate your honesty. Actually, that's very helpful for us. Uh, and um, let's see. Uh, do you have a favorite game? Uh, developer, um, yeah, favorite developer, favorite publisher, favorite team. Okay, so like we said before, you mentioned Valve. Mm -hmm. And what about Valve do you perceive uh, as good for gaming and that really speaks to you? It does. It feels like a spy and for real gamers. Actually, you know, some people over there, and uh, I can tell you, they're they're very, very. Uh, they they are all very aware that they have their dream jobs. Okay, so in a little bit more about just the company ethos, the game, anything. Okay, so there's a little bit of self awareness. generation of the fan side of you. Okay. So, do 
you have a favorite is there a vow for random that you're so loyal to you <laughs> okay half life enthusiast cool um may I, can i ask um with either vow or with with other uh job roles with other um in um indie companies are there uh do you ever buy merchandise do you run merchandise games for um for the developers or for your, the publishers oh, okay uh yes i actually do i have a um an n7 uh hoodie Mass Effect. Yeah, it's really cool. Exactly. And I'll actually mark that down. It, they can run a bit expensive, huh? Yes. Yes, Valve actually has a pair of, um, of, uh, they're sort of like the fuzzy ties, um, that you put in your car window, except that they're the, uh, the companion keys with hearts on them. I feel like they're... I love to have a pair of them, you know, but you know, sometimes it seems a little silly to spend money on stuff like that. Uh-huh. Oh, okay. So you like, um, fan books, art books, posters, that kind of memorabilia? Um, are there any, uh, books in particular that you have, or merchandise that that you really treasure, like, and, and that can be for many years. Oh, okay, yeah, I heard about that. The art of Dunwa, um, and that's Witch of Sonnet. And the Usage, this is, a like, a coffee table book. Yes, that is, uh, I think the design for that game was just absolutely wonderful. I was just, um, I was completely immersed. So, all right. Uh, and, um, and <laughs> one more question. Do you have a least favorite job or, or publisher? Someone that you sort of av avoid that feels toxic or anti-game to you? Okay. Yep. Um, that doesn't surprise me. Actually, have a box to click just for them, um, and even though I suspect uh, what your answer is going to be, could you give me just a little bit of? Uh huh. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to rant if you uh, you're welcome to, but just a couple of points about maybe what you perceive them to be doing um, that isn't helpful for the game and community. Okay. creators in the game. So you almost feel like it can be a bit of a, like an obtrusive hand into the game. And you find that uh, a little, okay, it's distracting when you're in the game. And you can feel Choices were made for mm -hmm, for profit. Okay, great. I will check back on that later. All right. No, that's great. And don't don't feel bad about it. We won't tell them. We're not affiliated with them. Um, I know exactly what you mean. I'm not the first person to say so. So. So now we're going to uh, get into talking about our game just a little bit, and then we'll let you get going. Um, so, uh, the game that we um, have had you testing, I wanted to ask if you have played uh, any similar games, if it evoked any games that you've uh, you've played recently or in the past. Okay. I'm 
actually been pleased to hear that. Um, could you tell us a little bit about what you found sort of unique then? Responding to the uh, the stylized bits of it and the atmosphere. Great. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. And I can read that. Okay. Um. And and again, even though you found that uh, quite unique, did it? Uh. Did it move you in a way that maybe other games have, or...? Oh, okay. Psycho. Mm -hmm. That's a good compliment. Shadow of the Colossus. Yeah. While our team will be really, really glad to see it. Yep. Absolutely. Um, and, and now, did you find the tutorial as you started out to be helpful? Mm -hmm. Th at this point, just if it was helpful, if it helped you kind of get going. Okay. Alright. Uh, and then that, that then leads to the question, did you find the tutorial? Uh, to be too long or cumbersome, kind of getting in the way of your natural rhythm of wanting to play. Oh, okay. So. What a monotonous. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, ideally, how long do you think it, you know, should have been? Was there a point where you kind of felt like, okay, I get it, if you remember? Uh-huh. Sure, it can be hard to remember. Oh, all right, so, kind of after introducing just the basic um, movement mechanics. Yeah. Got it? Now, um, as far as... The, uh, the, as far as the menu system, um, did you find the menu generally super intuitive? Okay. Yes, we, um, we tried to keep it quite minimal. Did you have, uh, did you ever have a problem, um, accessing it? Uh-huh. Okay, so we mapped the buttons fairly intuitively. And it was obvious enough that you could change the, um, uh-huh, great, okay. So you can really set that up however you like. Mm-hmm, yeah. We've tried to give you, you know, the the chance to um, modify, of course, with hotkeys and, mm, okay. And actually, um, just on that, uh, are you typical in terms of movement? Obviously, I'm guessing WASD feels good to you. Um, using M for mass, does that, yep, okay. Um, and um, we're using I, just M. Originally configured for inventory. How does that feel? Yes? Okay. Alright. So that's good. Um, and then once you are in the menu, did you feel uh, that it was easy to navigate? Okay. So you felt that the main screen... Mm -hmm. Now, 
what were uh, impressions of character selection and customization? And by that, I mean uh, everything from how they look to uh, to the um, the attributes you can sort of assign in the beginning. Sure, just take me through the character creation process, however you want to say it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you like the gender choice right off the bat. Non-women players are actually your favorite then. All right, that's good to know. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you felt, um, as far as choosing defaults, knowing that you could, of course, go in and change attributes, um, were the prosaic descriptions. Uh, with each character class and race, um, were those obvious enough to give you a sense of the sort of style of gameplay that would be best? Okay. Yes, those were the cl those are the main classes, um, and did you is one of those, uh, the type of class that you like to play, typically? Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Let me check that. The rogue class. Yeah. And is that most games? Okay. I do the same thing. I tend to play mage class in most games. Uh, may I ask, is that the unusual way? I know if, uh, that you had mentioned enjoying stealth before. Is that a big part of it? Alright. Stealth ability. And then uh, our ranged attacks as a player. So you do enjoy ranged attacks as well. Alright, perfect. Um, and as far as uh, physical customization, are you, is that something that matters to you? Terribly. Okay. So you, you don't have particular opinions about the hairstyles or the <laughs> makeup. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Oh, the face tat. Yeah, uh, facial tattoos have become a kind of a thing. Uh -huh. I think they can be fun. You did go ahead and choose one of those. <laughs> Great, okay. So that's good. Alright. Uh, now, I would like to ask, um, what were your impressions of the, uh, the skill tree and the overall uh, RPG elements? I know you would have had to level up a few times to begin to get familiar with that skill tree, um, but how did you find it? Were you enjoying it? Was it... Uh-huh. Okay. So you liked the layout. Mm -hmm. Yes, we did try to be a little artistic with it. Okay. So you enjoying that and the sort of aesthetic of it. Did that in any way make it less clear uh, how you would need to level up in order to get new skills and abilities. A little. Um, do you, do you remember any particular examples? If not, it's completely fine. Okay, so you were pulling out a branch there. I know what you're saying, and then not being sure um, when you'll be able to sort of meet back in the middle. Yes. No, I know exactly what they're talking about. Um, I think that's something we can look into. As a hint. How to gain sort of familiarity. Yeah. 
I was becoming more unplugged and more reorienting. Um, and I think it's important to know how to work toward them. Um, do you enjoy in games having um, an ability maybe once in the game to reset skill trees, or does that sort of not resonate with you? You do, okay. So, reset ability. And we're not really sure how that will work out yet. I'll keep a note of that though. I'll wait for that. Uh, let's see, let's see. Uh, for the more, um, oh, uh, as far as, so that we have the skill tree and then we also have, of course, the attributes, and which we have tried to kind of go out of the normal realm of attributes. Uh, did you find that confusing at all, or a little? Okay. Do you want to tell me a little bit about that? Mm -hmm. She says she's a great educator. Mm -hmm. What she would consider to be... Okay. Dexterity. For you being an avid gamer, just coming into a game and seeing that the attributes are a bit different, is that frustrating or is it kind of exciting uh, or is it a little bit of both? Okay. That's an honest answer. And can I ask, um, after you did start to build, uh-huh. Uh, did you start to um, maybe understand and appreciate the the attributes a little bit better, or did it become that much more frustrating? You did. Why? That's great. So, uh, let's just say, as you went along. Oh, perfect. Okay. I began to appreciate challenge a little bit. Mm, variety, okay. A little frustrating though, okay. You're giving such good feedback. Um, so many people, you know, they just, they just do it for the, you know, the free merchandise and then discard and that's that. So I really appreciate it and we'll definitely ask you back if if you would be willing. Um, okay, and we're almost done. Uh, how did you, uh, how did you respond to the general look and feel of the game and atmosphere? I know in the beginning you did mention that that seemed to be something you were enjoying. Okay. And can you tell me just a little bit about how it, it made you feel, um, and how it sort of set the tone for what kind of game you might be playing? Kind of a little mysterious. Uh -huh. Kind of in a high fantasy kind of world. Um, did you feel when you say high fantasy? Do you feel a fantasy in a way that's sort of been um, been been done before that you are a little weary of? Or oh, great. Okay. We did. We tried to make it uh, almost, um, yeah, I don't want to say comic style, exactly, that, uh, that handwork element, mm -hmm. so that maybe, yeah, no, that's a great way of putting it. Yes, 
the way that a, a modern person might dream of a fantasy. You know, it's not totally accurate. We've actually um, thrown in some anachronisms. Uh-huh. You were picking up on that. Yeah. We tried to do some of that through the music, um, some of that through the, just the way people talk, the, uh, the dialogue, to feel natural, to feel like it's, yes, exactly. And did you feel that that was, um, distracting? Did you feel like that was sort of inauthentic to the, the genre of fantasy, or? Uh-huh, okay, so at first it was a little jarring. So you felt that, as you could tell it was being intentional, you were more comfortable with it. Do you think that we could do more in the beginning, especially with sort of the opening sequences and the marketing, to suggest this sort of tone? Yes. Okay. Uh-huh. Even the name. So you feel that the name as it is, and maybe some of the description feels a little passe? R right. Oh, okay. So you think matching some of the more modern elements um, with the packaging scheme? A really, you know what? I was want to make sure we highlight that. Um, I think that that is very well put, and I am going to mark that for uh, for the big <laughs> for the big boss to see. So, yes, I really appreciate that. Um, as far as the uh, the voiceover, uh huh. So we had a little voiceover so far, and. Were you responding to that? Okay. And you were enjoying the, um, the casting choices? And okay, especially the female character. Yeah, she's a really, really versatile, lovely actress. I think she'll do great with it. Uh, at this point, we're wondering uh, to what degree does voiceover um, influence your enjoyment of the game? Um, do you like just some flavor text now and then, and do you prefer the whole game to be in real? later release date and uh, quite possibly a higher price point, would you, uh, would you say that that is a trade-off you would be willing to make? Okay. Um, yes, exactly. <laughs> a steam sale will always come along, won't it? Uh, and, um, do you have, um, actually, do you have any favorite voice actors? We won't probably be, um, recruiting anyone extra, but we like to keep a pulse on if there's an awareness of what, what voice actors are out there, and, uh, it's a very small community, so. Okay, sure, go to it, yeah? You see, big one. Or the one on my favorite. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, okay, yep, Brand has, gosh, she's in almost everything, okay, so that's good, yep, oh, 
we ask mostly to sort of just ascertain what awareness there is about um, voice actors and I guess how much attention people pay to it. Yes. Yes, it's coming to the point where we're actually having, you know, like celebrity voice actors um, in games and it can actually be a big draw for people. So we're trying to gauge going forward, you know, how much that matters to people, if people know about it. Yeah. It's quite fascinating. So, um, and, uh, do you have some of your favorite characters, um, regardless of voice actors, but favorite characters from other games you've played? Mm-hmm. Sure. I don't hear much about, but I thought it was great. Rogue Galaxy. Yeah. What is that about the Sentinel? She's so cool. Okay. Yeah. Leon Kennedy. <laughs> one to ten, um, one being not great, ten being quite good. Um, on a scale of one to ten, how fun would you rate the game? Three, six, and above. Okay. And on a scale of one to ten, how challenging would you rate the game? Yes, we only have it right now on the normal difficulty. We will have it on nightmare difficulty, as well as a sort of storytelling easy difficulty later but for now okay cool great okay uh and let's see um on a scale of one to ten how likely are you to purchase a game like this game yes okay and that would still be dependent Just to get some general feedback, I just wanted to ask if you had any uh, criticisms or concerns to add. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, some bugs, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so with armor, not appealing sometimes. And were you just getting transparent bodies at that point? Yep, I've seen it happen. It's very spooky. So that bug, I think we haven't seen before. So I'll make sure to catalog that. Okay, anything else? Mm-hmm. Okay, so you would like more voice actors. Not just for sort of the, the cutscenes and the main uh, main line. you most enjoy and appreciate in the game? Again, it, it just gets a little re redundant, okay? Um, okay, so mostly like the atmosphere, the music, the voice, okay? Yeah, there's great sound all throughout the game. And then, uh, okay, so the story was compelling. 
is cut so I can see that uh, okay um, what platform would you most likely purchase this game to play on? Uh -huh. okay Do you would be pretty open to this game on any platform you'd prefer PC? Uh, yes, we will have a lot of, um, uh, a bigger menu for key binding, uh, you'll see, uh, so that will be helpful. Yes, um, we will eventually enable all the developer's console. Mm-hmm. I'm sure there will be mods upon mods upon mods. Uh, I can't really advocate them, but yes, I can say they will exist. Uh, okay, well that's really everything I needed. You've been wonderful. Um, if I can just confirm your address, I can make sure to uh, send you uh, your gift card uh, in the mail. And most people prefer that um, just as a digital gift card. Uh, we can give you... Um, a little bit more value if you'd like to use it uh, as a Steam credit. Perfect. Uh, can I just get your your email then um, just to send me just a check? Okay. Just to Gmail. And can I have you just one more time? Mm -hmm. Just to check. So what we'll do is we will send that credit to you um, by the end of the day today, and you are free to use it on whatever you want. Uh, you will also be welcome uh, to come back. Um, we will be having a little bit of a launch party, uh, and you have actually been so helpful. Uh, we are allowed to invite a small number of testers to the party, uh, so I would love to contact you for that when that happens, since you've just been uh, so full of ideas and insight. Uh, is that same email a good email to contact you for the party? Okay. And would you mind me? Uh, I do have your phone number. I've had calls with you today, but will you just confirm that one more time for me that uh, a good number if we were to call uh, with an invitation to that event? Okay, well we have everything we need, and um, again, just many thank you again, you've been wonderful, and uh, I'm sure that your efforts uh, will be very much appreciated by the whole team, they're certainly appreciated by me, and uh, we will be in touch sometime soon, alright? Okay, thank you so much, have a wonderful day, bye now.